This is for Biology 223. I wanted to discuss an article that came out a few years ago. Uh, it said a letter to nature, so it's a short research article. Title is Altitude Adaptation in Tibetans Caused by Intercretion of Denisovan-like DNA. Uh, published in, in, in 2014, some time ago now, but it, uh, it's so relevant, especially for <clears throat> thinking about the uh, chapters on Mendelian inheritance and, and also the chapters on recombination in, in, in eukaryotes. So the, the, this paper is, I think, a landmark and it illustrates some interesting aspects, uh, some of them are technological. So this is relevant for the gene mapping or relevant to think about what happens in meiosis. <clears throat> so uh, let's start with the title. Altitude Adaptation in Tibetans Caused by Intercoression of Denisovan-like DNA. Uh, first of all, at altitude uh, adaptation, if someone says this, you might immediately think of physiological adaptation. If one goes up to a higher elevation, there's less oxygen um, pressure, less oxygen in the atmosphere, the partial pressure of oxygen is less, and we might get insufficient uh, oxygenation of hemoglobin and insufficient delivery of oxygen to tissues, our bodies. Um, so, so our bodies can adapt physiologically in uh, a couple different ways. One by uh, bisphosphoglycerate, it's a biochemical phenomenon, and also by increased production of hemoglobin in short term. Otherwise, uh, one can altitude sickness. Um, the highest peak here in Lebanon, Corne uh, Sauda, is uh, about 3,000 meters. That's high enough to, to, to notice the, the, the effect. If one goes to high elevations, I don't know where it starts, maybe it's obvious around 2,000 meters, one will notice that physical exertion uh, is quite a bit more difficult and one gets out of breath quite a bit faster. So, but this is not what this means. This is not about that adaptation, not about a physiological adaptation, but a, a genetic adaptation. And the genetic adaptation, so, so we, we want to distinguish between uh, uh, these meanings of the word, and, and um, it can be confusing. So uh, clearly it's about, it's about uh, we expect if it's about altitude adaptation, it's about uh, oxygen transport and the blood. Tibetans, Tibet is known to be a high elevation plateau in, in Asia um, that's uh, um, <clears throat> notable for being one of the highest inhabited places on Earth. Perhaps the other one is in um, uh, South America, Andeans, uh, Bolivia, and parts of the Andes in Peru. So, altitude adaptation in Tibetans is caused by integration. Integration, what is integration? So integration, if I can diagram this here, if we have through time, so this would be the past here, and this would be the present, we have a species that diverge. Species diverge and branch off, and this is something you've covered in your introductory biology course. And the question you might think of, so what does it mean for speciation, what speciation really refer to? We have, clearly we have, uh, let's say we have different animals, uh, let me give you the example because I'll have another problem about it, between the horse and the donkey. Uh, they're different species. How do we define feces? So clearly they don't interbreed productively, they don't breed, interbreed successfully, but they share a common ancestor. So how we define a species depends. If it's a virus, well it's not a sexually uh, sexual species is not diploid uh, recombination occurs but it's it's uh, we don't really think of breeding populations so species doesn't make sense we also have complications like in, uh, I think it's seagulls or there's a ring species where around the Arctic any breeding pool can interbreed with the neighboring pool but the ends can't so this this is not simply uh, is not there's not an absolute definition that works at all uh, cases. Here, the inter word integration means when we have two different species, but 
there's exchange of genetic information. So there's some sort of gene uh, flow between two species, and so we have this intermediate species. Uh, Dr. Caneo um, studies this as a mechanism of how host races cause speciation and how much integration is. So in this time here, when the species are diverging, its gene flow stops, but some persist in any way. So we have integration uh, in some human ancestor of Denisovan life. Denisovan, this, there's a cave in Denisova in Siberia, and Denisovan is the word for a different member of the homo genus, so not homo sapiens, or in this case, not homo uh, neanderthalus, uh, that's be a small n, Neanderthalus, but a Homo Denisovan, so some relative of Neanderthals um, that are identified as having uh, 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 being a different species or, or a different some or, or at least a different uh, subtype of, of archaic human. And notice integration of Denisovan-like DNA. They say Denisovan-like DNA because it's not certain. Let's, let's read the abstract and see what we can understand. Uh, this being a nature letter, there's not properly an abstract. It's a first paragraph, but it functions on the abstract. So we expect, as typical, there's going to be some presentation of the phenomenon of interest, the specific phenomenon perhaps, broad phenomenon, and the specific phenomenon, and then uh, the questions um, and the findings with the methods and significance shoved in there wherever it can be and at the end. So as modern humans migrated out of Africa, so this is at some time in the past, humans originated in Africa and they migrated out. They migrated out of Africa to colonize the, the Near East, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, eventually Australia, East Asia, and the New World. They encountered many new environmental conditions, including greater temperature extremes. If you think about Africa, it doesn't have glaciers. It does get quite hot in areas, but it certainly doesn't have the extreme that's found, or found in other uh, parts of the world. Different pathogens, right? There are going to be all sorts of differences in different habitats, including pathogens specific to temperate and, and Arctic regions, and higher altitudes. That's the one most relevant here, higher altitudes. The highest point in Africa, I think, is Mount Kilimanjaro. And uh, in people, I don't think, um, have colonized it and stay up there which is true in other parts of the world, such as Bolivia and Tibet. These diverse environments are like the active agents of natural selection and have led to local adaptation. So there's a lot in that sentence there getting us to think about uh, what's going on here is that <clears throat> there's a population with a bottleneck, there's a founder effect, and there's gonna be very rapid positive selection as well as genetic drift when a population encounters a new environment, including here uh, uh, the, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, led to local adaptations in whatever pool, whichever group left. One of the most celebrated examples, right, it's well known, it's well studied, established in examples in humans is the adaptation of Tibetans to the hypoxic, right, low oxygen environment of a high altitude Tibetan plateau. A hypoxia pathway gene, EPAS, EPAS1 was previously identified having the most extreme signature of pos uh, positive selection. So we can, with um, statistical methods, look at the relative frequency of, of uh, synonymous versus non-synonymous mutations in, in genes and say, where is there evidence of normal genetic drift, normal change of mutation, and where is there evidence that there's been selection? We don't, let's not get into this here. That would be a later chapter, which we, we don't really cover in this course. And was shown to be associated with differences in hemoglobin concentration at high altitude. So uh, there was a sign that this gene has undergone positive selection, that it has to do with fitness, and it's about a, hypothe a hypoxia response, that is, a gene that's involved in, in responding to low oxygen. Um, and it affects 
differences in hemoglobin concentration, high altitude. So our naive thought would be that, oh, well, Tibetans probably have more hemoglobin because they need more. Well, uh, there's, uh, that, that's reasonable to think that way, but um, one has to remember that hemoglobin transports and having more of it should increase transportation, but in low oxygen environment, it might be about its affinity and response and how well it delivers. Secondly, and this is discussed here in the introduction, that increase in the high hemoglobin is limited because high hemoglobin uh, concentration associated with increased blood glucosity, increased cardiac effects, effects events, uh, thus resulting in a net reduction of fitness. So the short-term adaptation, or medium-term, short-term adaptation for us is to um, uh, this phosphoglycerate. Medium-term might be increased um, hemoglobin, uh, but that can actually be reduce our fitness. Resequencing, so, so resequencing the region around EPSA in 40 Tibetan and 40 Han. Han, that's the dominant Chinese ethnic group. So they, they, they took uh, samples of 40 Tibetans and 40 of the closest relatives to Tibetans, and they sequenced them deeply. We find that this gene has a highly unusual haplotype. Haplotype structure means a specific sequence, a specific pattern of se sequence in an area with all of the mutations, and each unique sequence would be a different haplotype. So not just uh, um, a, uh, a single nucleotide polymorphism, but all the polymorphisms in a particular sequence. Um, has a highly unusual haplotype structure that can only be convincingly explained. This is a very important point. This is not about proving, this is about being convincing. By the integration of DNA from Denisovans or Denisovan related individuals into humans. So, scanning, a, so um, what they explain is that when they searched for the sequence they found, it showed up only in a database that. Uh, match a sequence from a um, human tooth or something, a Denisovan tooth um, found in this cave, and that's no, any, nothing close to it in any uh, Homo sapien database. Scanning a larger set of worldwide populations, you find that the selected haplotype is only found in Denisovans and in Tibetans, and a very low frequency of among Han Chinese, who presumably have some interbreeding of Tibetans. Furthermore, the length of the haplotype is very long. It's not just a small thing, so we can apply a lot of statistics here. The fact that it's not found in any other populations makes it unlikely the haplotype sharing between Denisovans and, and Tibetans and Denisovans cause an incomplete ancestral lineage sorting rather than integration. That would be that there were both sequences in the gene pool and when speciation occurred between Denisovans and, and Soifians, that both of them, did. and we can look at statistical tests, we can use statistics to see how likely that is. So that's been ruled out. Our findings illustrate that admixture with other hominin species, that's technical for that clade, has provided genetic variation that helped humans adapt to new environments. So uh, this has a lot of uh, ramifications about human history, which is of deep interest to, to many people, public and geneticists. Also about um, how it is that the technology is advanced and the databases are complete enough that we can, and their statistical uh, tools have advanced that we can make these arguments. Um, and. This shows up in other papers where we have disease alleles uh, as well that show up. Um, there's another paper that uh, maybe I'll show in which there's a gene conferring risk of diabetes when lean shows up in a Mexican population that also seems to have originated from uh, Tibetans, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, from Neanderthals. Um, and so that's a case where it's not simply selection for something higher altitude, it could be a, a selection on the basis of diet. Okay, I'm gonna stop here, and, um, and uh, the point is you should be able to read this, understand it, appreciate it, even if the technology and the, and the statistical methods are, are, are beyond the scope of this course.